so all of this after I've talked to you probably sounds futile. If there's not much that you can do about it. Well, that's not true. There's a lot of things that you can do. There's behaviors, there's herbal products, there's medications, and there's a lot of things we can do. And so let's kind of go through some of them. How can you prevent urinary tract infection? Well, um, once we've gone through all the anatomy, um, you can kind of understand some that there are some things that you can do that are easy and helpful. The first thing is, is in order to prevent infections, you have to think about your bladder like you want your bladder to be like a babbling brook. You do not want your bladder to be like a stagnant pool of water because the longer any bacteria, uh, bacteria are going to probably get up in our bladders. And we want them to have the less, least possible time they, they can up there to stay in there and start causing trouble. So what you want to do is if you have a problem with bladder infections, you want to make sure that you drink enough water so that your urine pretty much looks like water. So people always say, how much water should I drink? Well, everybody's different. Some people sweat and, and lose uh, water in other places. But if you look at the color of your urine, it should be light to clear, and that will help you flush everything out. The second thing is, is you don't want to be holding on to your urine too long. So let's say, for instance, you're one of these people that can, is lucky enough to hold your urine for eight hours a day. Well, that's very convenient because you don't lose a lot of time going back and forth to the bathroom, but it's terrible for the standpoint of bladder infections uh, because that gives you more time. That gives more time for any bacteria to get up there to stay in your bladder. So uh, we like to tell you to maybe go to the bathroom at least every two or three hours. And if you're drinking enough water, that shouldn't be a problem. Next. Um, hygiene. Um, always wipe from the front to the back. Um, knowing that the anus and rectum are re reservoirs for fecal material, uh, you want to make sure that you do wipe from front to back. Um, seems self-evident, but sometimes not. Um, sometimes people, as they get older, will have problems with hemorrhoids and hygiene and things like that. And so sometimes you do have to take a shower or a bath to help keep clean there after a, a, a BM. People ask me all the time, do wipes make a difference? Probably not. Um, it, what makes a difference is the hygiene, and so if they help uh, people be cleaner, it's not a bad idea to use them. But um, antimicrobial wipes and things like that probably do a little bit more harm than good because they just cause the tissues to dry up more. Next, um, sex, intercourse. There are, um, of all the people that come to see me, oftentimes they'll come and they'll say, listen, I don't know why I'm getting these. I'm not even having intercourse anymore. Or... Is there something I'm doing wrong in my sex life while I'm getting these infections? And uh, intercourse is very a very good way of getting a bladder of getting a urinary tract infection because just the mechanical motion of intercourse can help sweep any bacteria in the vagina or in the lower part of the ureter up into the bladder. But what typically happens is after intercourse, if you have um, if you go ahead and urinate, you'll flush those um, bacteria right out. Uh, but sometimes it does get to be a problem. And in fact, there's an old-fashioned condition that people used to talk about called honeymoon cystitis. And in the olden days, when, uh, um, when women would come back from their honeymoons, it was very, very, very common for them to have bladder infections. Now, it's not... Um, oftentimes nowadays, um, the sexual activity of young women increases a lot when they go off to college. And apparently 30% of college-age women will get one infection and uh, 20 in the first year, and 20% uh, will get more than one infection uh, just because of the increased frequency of intercourse. Uh, spermicidal jellies that sometimes are in condoms or women use for birth control can increase the risk of, um, of urinary tract infections because they do alter that vaginal um, pH and makes them more likely to get infections. But um, usually if uh, infections are being triggered by intercourse, in, in general, especially in young women, they develop tolerance to this. And so, you know, they may have problems for three to six months to a year, and then generally after that, it'll wear off. But um, this can, there are women who have lifelong problems with um, infections triggered by intercourse. Now, the things you can do by this is you can make sure that you urinate um, after intercourse, try not to have a intercourse with a full bladder, and oftentimes I will take care of the problem. If there's not, there's other strategies that we can do. So, but there's nothing, um, nothing about intercourse that's you know, necessarily dirty or causing these infections. But there are some things that you can do to help prevent it. So, um, now people talk about tub bathing. Is that bad? Probably not, as long as you have a good hygiene and you're not having a lot of fecal spillage in the bathtub. Um, cotton underwear is probably a good idea, just because it breathes more when things, when your tissues breathe more. 
more blood area, more, more white blood cells can help prevent infections. Pads and incontinence. A lot of women as they get older are having problems with their bladder and this leads to needing pads. Pads probably are a re, uh, risk factor for recurrent bladder infections just because um, anything that keeps moisture against your skin like a wet swimsuit or a wet pad is probably going to um, increase your risk of, of um, bladder infections. It would be best to get out of those if at all possible. Um, that's a subject for another talk. There's a big, you know, there are a lot of women start to develop incontinence problems, either leaking when they cough and sneeze or leaking when they can't get to the bathroom as they get older. There is a whole bunch of stuff that can be done for that problem. And so um, sometimes helping with the infections is getting rid of the cysts. Now, um, go back to fallen bladders and things like that. If women have a very fallen bladder and they don't empty their bladder, sometimes they need surgery to help that. Um, if they have one of those little cysts along the urinary tract, um, sometimes, uh, usually those will have to be removed to help prevent infections. But if you can, um, most of the time when women come with infection, there is not an obvious cause, and some of these behaviors can help. So.